we're back with another episode of American Horror Story 1984. So we're going to jump right into it. And to be honest with you, this episode was actually a lot better than the uh, opener last week. Don't get me wrong, I have watched the episode 1 again and I enjoyed it more the second time around. But the first time I was a bit like, oh, right, you know, it's okay, it's not bad, you know. It's setting things up, which is obvious, you know, it has to do. But with this one, I must admit, I absolutely did like this one. And it started off with a bang. And I thought that was brilliant. Again, you know, it opens the usual, you know, the synth soundtrack, which is now uh, going for the series. Well, for this episode, this season anyway. Obviously being the 80s and a lot and lots of other 80s properties are now using synth and all that. Which is good. And synth ways making a massive comeback anyway. But yeah, so we open up and we see Karen, the Doctor... Who is uh, told that obviously uh, Mr. Jingles has escaped. And we see that she actually has gone to the camp. And she is there to warn Margaret. To let them know obviously that Mr. Jingles has escaped. And the camp should be closed. But obviously, well, Margaret being Margaret. She's like, no, it's going to stay open. Basically the stupid, you know, the stupid plot that normally goes with these kind of things. But it was good the way it was done. Obviously, with all this that has happened, you do see now that Karen, she goes out in her car and she dies. You know, the kill is not exactly a bloody kill. You know, probably the most graphic part of it is that you do see Jingles cut off her ear. And obviously it goes into the opening, which again, as I was saying, it is growing on me. And I'll uh, probably like it better towards the end. Obviously, then afterwards, then we do see that it actually cuts back to the lodge where everyone, so all the guys and the girls, you know, they're all having beers and everything else, having a good time. Obviously, the night before the big opening, you know, that sort of thing. You know, and, uh, you know, then the, the news pops up. It says, obviously, that Swayze is now dead and the killings could belong to the Night Stalker, which obviously gets Emma Roberts' character, Brooke, into a more into a more upstate thing about it but it's really good the way it's been done because obviously she's like no it could be him now and obviously he's on his way here to come and get me but everyone's like oh no don't be stupid margaret comes back in and you know she's like oh you're all gonna sin you've all been you've all been together you're drinking temptation all this stuff and she tells them all to get out well the guys to get out she's like right all of you get out go shower because obviously this is wrong and the camp opens tomorrow and lights out in 10. So obviously they all, uh, they all leave. Brooke and Montana, so Billy Lord's character, you know, they're together and uh, they're talking about certain things. Talking about, obviously, Mr. Jingles and uh, everything else and the Night Stalker. And this is when we find out what the ring is that Emma Roberts had in the first episode. Which is the one the Night Stalker uh, tried taking. And... It shoots back to last summer, so 1983, and it shows Brooke uh, is about to actually be married. So she's there at the altar and everything else, and to be honest, she was a good little uh, good little uh, segment, basically, to put in here to show the history of what's happened. And straight away, the wedding turns into a bloodbath. She's up there, you know, she, her uh, fiancé's there, you know, he's looking at her and everything else, and the priest goes off, you know, do you take so and so to be your wife and he didn't say anything then and he looks for his best man they have an argument because the best man stayed the night before at brooke's place but they're just friends obviously she's like no nothing nothing's happened nothing's happened and all of a sudden the music changes to white wedding which i thought was brilliant and well the groom shoots the best man then he shoots the father of brooke and then he shoots himself so it kind of turned into a little bit of a massacre and that's where we find out uh, then we see Billy Lord that she may be bisexual. We're not too sure yet because of what's happened. And we see her trying to kiss Brooke. And she's like, no, 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 you know, not that. You know, anyways. So there's that part there. But, you know, it does just... It kind of plays out really fast, this episode. Because then it goes to, you know, to uh, Cody Fern's character, Xavier and all that. And he's left the boys. He's gone somewhere. And all of a sudden, he just... Gets abducted by someone that we do not know, like, you know? He gets chucked in the back of the car. There's this guy called Blake, and he's like, no, you do not call me that. And he's like, oh, okay, daddy. Obviously, he called him daddy. And this is where we found out that Xavier actually done gay for pay. 
Yes, he did. And he said he was one and done sort of thing. And But this guy, you know, he's like, no. But then that's when Xavier turns. He's like, "How if I can get you someone better than me? So he's like, right, okay. And that's where he goes then to the showers. Blake's watching him through a peephole. Before anything can happen, Xavier has just disappeared. And next thing Blake knows, well, last thing he felt actually is a spear go through the back of his head. And uh, Mr. Jingles has killed him. It was a pretty good death, I must admit. Reminded me a lot of Friday the 13th Part 3. You know, with the uh, spear gun. Reminded me a hell of a lot with that. We then see Brooke on the lake. She's just there, you know. She's just sat there, you know, feet in the water. But then a body, if you remember the body from last episode, floats under her. And she's like, oh shit, she jumps up, turns around. And she's greeted by the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez. And... That was actually quite good. It got me. It was a good little way that they'd done it. He's like, no, Satan opened the door and I just walk through and I see you. Carries on from there. They have a bit of a tussle, which ends with them running through the woods. And the uh, Night Stalker, he trips. It's like, what the hell, you know? And all of a sudden you find out it's the hitchhiker from the last episode. Uh, he's the one who's tripped him, even though we saw him get done. You know, it's like, what? Like, you died. Anyway, it goes to show that this guy is actually a ghost. So they've thrown in uh, ghosts now into the uh, series, which I think is really good as well. Because obviously, first of all, it was just, you know, like the slasher genre. But now they're bringing in ghosts and other entities, which is really good. And the Night Stalker kills him. And he's chasing and everything else. But then that's where he sees out. Then we see that he's, uh, the Hitchhiker is there again. And obviously, the Night Stalker is a bit like, what the hell's going on? Even he can't seem to understand what's going on. So it's really good when that happens. You know, and then they say there's a good part then when the nurse, you know, she is there. She's looking around for a few things. Then all of a sudden, she looks behind her and Mr. Jingles is just standing directly behind her. So she is a little bit like, oh my God. So, and, you know, Angelica Rossi, you know, she's Rita, she's the nurse. And she's just, and they cuts to a black end. It's like, what's going on? But you find out she's been stabbed in the shoulder kind of thing and she locked him in there. But then they're alerted to screams. So they run away and that's where they find the body of Blake. They're all freaking out like what's going on. Obviously Brooke is like saying no. This has happened. The Night Stalker's here. I've just had a tussle with him. And everyone's like right let's get the fuck out of here. Which obviously they do. The One of the funniest things is. Margaret goes back to her little cabin and all. And she walks in there. And Richard Ramirez. The Night Stalker's just sat there. And they start talking. It's like, what the hell are you? It's like, is she in with him or something? You know, what's going on? But no, we don't. She gets her first aid kit. She bandages the Night Stalker up. And they talk about the hitchhiker and uh, how Ramirez killed him twice. Margaret's like, no, he's there because, because of God. He believed in God. And he brings all that kind of stuff. And it's quite an interesting scene because it shows that Margaret is actually flirting with the Night Stalker. Which is just crazy to think of straight away. And it goes back to a little bit of a origin story, actually, for the Night Stalker. You know, they show him you know, when he was young. He had seizures because he got hit on the back of the head with a swing. And uh, his cousin was back from Vietnam. And uh, he was, you know, he says he was a Green Beret. And he's the one who, you know, he actually witnessed his first murder by his cousin who killed his wife in front of him. And he, he, you know, he must have been no younger than 10. So obviously he was a bit like, you know, he's told Margaret all of this as well. And he also tells her that he's come back for Brooke. So she's like, right, I need to find this missing counsellor. But uh, she tries to get the Night Stalker to convert a loving god, which is weird, you know. But uh, it's then it obviously cuts forward straight away then to the van where they're all trying to get in. And this is when um, they start the van. But this is when Rita jumps in front of them. And, you know, obviously causes the van to swerve and crash again. And now they're like, right, okay. We need to uh, need to do this now. We need to get keys because Trevor, Matthew Morrison's character, he's, his keys are actually back at the lodge. So a group go with him and then a group go with Rita to get her keys from the infirmary. So two groups split up who's in the die first like you know and they go their separate ways that is when they both start getting done on the doors you don't know which one's at them and it's like is a night stalker going for brook or is it mr jingles or is it the other way around way around and that's when he just cut the black and it was actually a really good episode i must admit overall i actually really enjoyed it and we've got to see a little bit more of all the characters but i say i will admit the wedding of emma roberts's character that's 
just, I was like, oh my god. You know, that literally shocked me because I didn't think anything like that would happen. But look forward to next week's one. And I'm actually looking as well to seeing how Margaret copes with the Night Stalker. Because it'll be very interesting to see how all this pans out. And if you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll see you all next time for more American Horror Story.